Thanks so much uh, for joining me and, and welcome back. Now today uh, we're going to be talking about a very, very important topic, uh, combustible relationships. Now a lot of you watching can relate uh, to this issue of combustible relationships. I wanted to explain um, what they are, <laughs> what you can do if um, you're in one, and really um, what what comes into play um, with these combustible relationships that really make so many people so crazy. Um, and, and, and why is it that some of our relationships, whether that's sister to sister, um, brothers, um, it's spouses, cousins, co-workers, how come sometimes we can really find our peace and harmony with another human beings and it's so easy to do and other times these relationships are filled with so many ups and downs that we feel like we're on a huge roller coaster. Now chances are if you can't find any sustained level of peace in your relationship, um, chances are you're in a combustible relationship. Now, how do I define a combustible relationship? A combustible relationship occurs uh, when the chemical mix required to form a relationship. When that comes together and just pure chemistry, the mix in and of itself, not the two people separately, but together, they create a combustible mix. Um, the relationship is often, uh, there's an underbelly of toxicity to it. And when I say combustible, I'm not talking about combustibility like a 4th of July fireworks. Um, examples of combustible matches are all around us in this world. Now, I'm just going to bring it all the way down to like a, si a sixth grade science class level, okay? Think about something as simple as bleach and ammonia, okay? Um, both of these chemicals, they can be used for cleaning a house and they can do it extremely well. However, if you put bleach and ammonia together, they're extremely toxic and the fumes produced by these two chemicals have been known to kill folks. So again, that's an example of um, two combustible elements that are fine separately, but when they come together, that's the problem. You know, important to understand that chemistry is not compatibility. Let's, let me repeat that again. Chemistry is not compatibility. Um, and when chemistry is there, chemistry will, is the spark, but compatibility is the spark plug that keeps an engine churning along for, you know, the long haul or at least a sustained period of time. And many people hold on to combustible relationships because they're really looking to reignite um, that spark that they once held. But, but the problem comes in that, you know, that spark can be very misleading because a, a, a spark is a spark. You know, it can kind of come at unexpected times, but a spark wasn't necessarily meant to sustain itself. Again, uh, chemistry can be just the spark. But if we're talking about compatibility, that's the spark plug. I want to give you um, some things to think about. And how do you know if you are in a combustible relationship? Number one, you experience incredible, amazing highs. So when everything is good, it's perfect. Uh, number two, you experience debilitating lows. 
So when it dips low, it's immobilizing. It's not just a little dip and you can come back. It can be immobilizing. Number three, you're unable to find that peace and sustained security you look you may be looking for in the connection. Um, and next, you find yourself saying all the time, this is not who I am. I hate the person that I've become in this relationship. I want to give you some things to think about. Um, should you um, decide to stay in the combustible relationship? or should you decide to leave your combustible relationship? Um, I want to put a, a disclaimer in here before I go further. Um, if your combustible relationship has morphed into any type of verbal, uh, mental, uh, physical abuse, you need to get yourself to safety. Um, I'm not advocating by any stretch of the imagination that anyone stay in something that has turned abusive. Uh, I have a, a zero tolerance policy for that. Um, now that said, there are some um, combustible relationships that, you know, this may be a family member. <laughs> it's not so easy uh, to just dismiss. Uh, this could be a co-worker and for those my advice to you I would give you the same advice if you are inside one of these relationships if you were handling that ammonia or bleach and that advice is to handle with care these are not relationships that you can be um, reckless in or reckless about because of the nature of the chemistry, the chemical mix together. Um, I have a colleague that I have to work with only a couple times a year, um, but because of my personality, her personality, you know, taken separately, it's fine. Put us together is just um, a, a, a volatile mix. So one of the things that I'm going to recommend that you do, and this is what I do, you really have to be very clear um, I don't think if you're in a combustible relationship, it does any good to dance around the issues. You know it's combustible. They know it's combustible. So what you do is you lay down some ground rules. Okay, look, I realize, you know, this is my personality. This is your personality. You know, what, what do you need from me so we can move along in as much harmony as possible? I think you need to put all your cards out on the table because when you do that, it really helps to shore up awareness. And awareness um, is really a necessary tool um, when you're dealing, in, uh, dealing with a combustible relationship. Um, creating space, um, creating ground rules, um, all of that is going to be necessary because many times a combustible relationship produces heavy emotions in people. And when emotions are triggered, uh, that's when the brain is often hijacked. So um, when and where you can, rules, regulations, boundaries, anything that you can do to promote um, awareness. Now, um, people have asked me, many times. Uh, can these relationships work? Um, can, can they, can it ever work out if, if it's a true combustible match? Now, he, here's the thing you need to think about. Um, if, if you are going to leave or stay, if we're looking at the issue from a from a purely organic perspective. You know, God put us here to become more of who we are, not less of who we are. And the people that I've seen stay in these combustible, uh, I'm zeroing in on love relationships now, they inevitably either have to find a way to deal with the physical and emotional drain of the highs and lows, which can be very debilitating um, and stressful, or they have to actually change 
who they are for the sake of the relationship to work. They actually have to become on some level an entirely different person. And there is a stress involved with that in and of itself. I'll give you an example. Um, I was working with a gentleman and he was in a combustible relationship and he really loved uh, he loved the outdoors. It's just really part of who he was. Um, he was paired with a woman who not only hated the outdoors, but gave him hell every time he wanted to pack up, go camping, do this or that. It caused screaming matches all the time because he wanted to be outside. She wanted to be inside. And eventually he caved in um, for her. And I'll tell you, within three years, the relationship fell apart. Because in order to accommodate the relationship, he had to completely shut down such a major part of who he was. And that really was not organic. So, you know, I, I think, c can they work? Yes, they can work, but it, it, it involves extreme levels of fatigue because you're going to feel like a Mack truck ran over you consistently because you're navigating the highs and lows. Or it involves just kind of... Um, uh, chipping away at the organic pieces of, of who God um, made you. And again, he put us here to experience and explore all of who we are. And if you have to negotiate that away just for the sake of a relationship, I would ask that you seriously consider um, if that's a healthy uh, place for you to be because I highly doubt it. Uh, a question to ask yourself if you are in a combustible relationship is how do you really want to spend your time? How do you really want to spend the precious time that we all have here on the planet? You know, and folks, the train is going forward. It's not moving backward. So the minutes and the hours and the days mean something. Do you want to be fighting? Uh, do you want to be anxious? Do you want to be upset? Um, or do you want to be um, enjoying your time living fully, um, living in a healthy manner with lots of opportunity um, in front of you. You know, combust combustible matches generally end up exploding because that's what happens when you put two chemical mixes together that don't fit. You're going to have lots of explosions. So I hope that something that, that I said here will resonate with you and make a difference. And I'll see you next time.